the very least speed wise, the average internet speed of the average internet user consistently goes up. Do you know what else goes up? Airplanes. Do you know what's internet speed isn't going up though? Also airplanes. If you've ever been on an airplane, tried using the in-flight Wi-Fi, paid for it for whatever reason, and then tried to go to a website like, God forbid, YouTube or Twitch or any of those types of content-heavy sites, you probably had a rough experience because those speeds are often as slow as 0.1 to 0.2 megabits per second. And on top of that, the latency is absurd. We're talking one to three seconds from when you make a request to when you get any response back. So how the hell did I build a website that works well on airplanes? Is it just a bunch of static HTML? Well. Even static HTML would not be a great experience on a plane because every time you click a link, you have to wait for that ping to go back and forth before you can even start receiving the response. Because of this, the ideal solution isn't just HTML or being super minimal in the traditional sense. It's having a good understanding and balance between minimal content upfront and good preloading behaviors going forward. Believe it or not, an SPA is actually one of the better solutions when you're in these environments because of how much earlier you can start fetching content you have the option to, in order to make the full experience feel snappier, and you no longer have to rely on a network request on every single navigation, every time you go back, etc. The solution here is somewhat more hybrid. That all said, if you need the JavaScript in order to run and show content in the first place, and then the JavaScript has to make API requests in order to get the content there, just the number of round trips in the waterfall, as we call it, is going to make your experience miserable. So what does it look like to have a website that is static enough to load quickly, but also dynamic in SPA enough to maintain a quality experience as you navigate it. What if I told you that's the default experience in Next.js with App Router? Because I was very, very surprised when I learned this. I want to showcase a video I recorded when I was actually on an airplane. Obviously, there's no audio or anything, but I was using in-flight Wi-Fi, getting a consistent 0.2 megs with about 1500 milliseconds of latency. And the quality of experience was surprisingly good. Here's the video of me on an airplane playing around with upload thing. I wish I had the network tab open so you could see when I clicked stuff, but basically as soon as I hover over something, I click it. So like I clicked overview there and it basically immediately loaded. Going to all these different pages felt super, super snappy. And when things need to load in because we use streaming for that file table, you're able to get to the page almost immediately. And then the content that has to load comes in after. And that's not being done through a traditional like API request that then renders the content on the client. A lot of this stuff is being done via streamed HTML coming back from the server as part of that initial request. So when you request to the upload thing server, it starts by giving you an HTML shell of whatever content was blocking, so to speak. So anything that isn't inside of a suspense. All of that content loads, you get back to that first page. But if it's anything wrapped in suspense, that comes in later through that same HTML, HTTP request streamed in as an additional response that gets rendered in the right place once it comes through. This type of partial plus streaming behavior is something that used to be really, really hard to do. And now it's just kind of the default in Next.js. This performance was incredible to see. And we're not doing anything special here. We're kind of just using App Router the way it was built to be used. And if I spin up a quick example, I can show, okay, what I mean here. The layout's super boring, has metadata, has HTML, parent tag, body with the inter class name so that we can have the inter font loaded properly. And then we have the page and all the stuff that this comes with. I bun dev, cool, it loads with hi. Believe it or not, hi is not particularly interesting to us. So we wanna put something dynamic. And when I say dynamic, I mean something intentionally slow. So we're gonna do async function slow load. And in here we're gonna I should probably make now we have this wait for which will effectively let us await in here. So we're gonna block for a bit. Let's thank you, Copilot, for writing this video for me. I'm gonna put this underneath here. And what we'll see now is when I refresh, the page takes way more time now. If I command shift R, you'll see that loading spinner. And it comes through eventually, but now our load times literally take three seconds because it blocks. Let's say we wanted this to come in later. We're okay with this not being there when the page first renders. We wanna get you a response as quickly as possible. Thankfully, with these new React patterns, that has gotten incredibly easy. I want to do here for that. Suspense, import that. And now when I load the page, we get high back immediately. And at some point after we get back this slow. I wanna show off the network tab, but I don't wanna show off the network tab in dev mode. In Next.js, running starts the equivalent of running it on a real server, so this should be much closer to replicating production. Oh, but since I am not putting some cache headers here saying, by the way, this is always dynamic, export force dynamic, cool. Now that done that, it will always make this part of the content dynamic, so this page will always be regenerated on request. Button run start, and once again, we see 
high comes in immediately, and then slow comes in after. Let's take a look at how this behaves if I move over to slow 3G speeds. We're on an incognito tab, slow 3G speeds, loading the page. Takes a bit to start getting content. What you'll see is we actually get everything at once. The reason for that is it took so long for the rest of the payload to come through that the server finished the generation step. So it actually seemed like it came an instant, even though there was more work being done. If I change this from slow 3G to fast 3G, you'll see here, localhost responds pretty quickly, and then the rest of the data comes in later. And this is the difference with Next.js and other streaming solutions, is we start downloading content, we can show the content we've downloaded, but then more content comes through as the streaming finishes up. It's really nice to not have additional requests necessary to get the rest of the HTML. In fact, I can disable JavaScript entirely. I didn't think that would work. Yeah, I figured it needed the JavaScript to actually do something with that HTML. Just wanted to confirm. And the JavaScript parses the rest of this response and renders it all in the right place. And the JavaScript that does that, relatively small. There's just like, what, 100 kilobytes of JavaScript across all of this? That's nothing. That's like absolutely nothing. And the actual app JavaScript is 855 bytes. We can look at the response from the stream here, and it's going to have all of the content and then a bunch of inline script tags to handle all the weird shit that could potentially happen. But we see here that it does actually have the high and it also actually has the slow because this all came in through the HTML eventually. And the, the fact that React now is smart enough to stream through additional data over time, well, that's not like an actual breakdown here. It's really, really cool. I am blown away with the capabilities of these solutions. And when you combine that with the other stuff built into Next, like prefetching of visible links, so if you have a link tag that leads to another page that's visible, it can automatically fetch that page's content ahead of time. You end up with a navigation experience that feels significantly snappier. I, I'm blown away. The, the total content transferred here is 162 kilobytes. Admittedly, it's a very boring page. But the point here isn't how much content is in the page, it's how well Next.js and the tools built into React now allow you to send so little to the user, block as you need to on the server, but stream the right response to the client such that things feel incredibly snappy even in these chaotic environments. And as I showed before with the slow 3G, even though the first paint takes a bit longer, it actually feels a bit snappier because by the time the content is coming through, the servers finish generating it. So you get everything at once just because of the nature of how the server is generating these responses. That's really cool. I am, yeah, I'm blown away with the performance I've been seeing. And if you, you turn off disable cache because nobody has their cache disabled, you now have JS files loading instantly from your cache. You have CSS, you have the font files, all of these things load as soon as you need them. But the HTML you get back and the additional content you get from the stream now can be parsed instantaneously. You don't need more JavaScript to download and then run. It's already there, it just has to run. And now it knows what to do with these responses instantaneously. And even though we're on a slow 3G connection with a ton of latency, the page loads, super snappy still. And that's the difference. When you have more latency, when you have more chaos, more round trips is always bad. The thing that this does differently is it reduces the round trip significantly because we don't have to send HTML that tells you to download more JavaScript that then has to run, but then has to make an API request that then has to render. Instead, we send you the HTML. You download a little bit of JavaScript in the background while our servers are running our additional server code for the stream. And then we've streamed in that response by the time the JavaScript's ready. It just applies the changes to the DOM. It's two waterfalls instead of like 20. That's incredible. That is so much better for environments like an airplane where where the ping is massive, where each of those waterfalled requests is an additional one to three seconds, regardless of bandwidth, just in latency time alone. And that's what I mean when I say my website is airplane proof. So we're gonna get all of the chaos from my Chrome extensions in the dev tools here too. What I'm specifically saying is that the amount of waterfalls necessary to navigate an upload thing is actually incredibly low. And even though I have this set on slow 3G, pages still load, Surprisingly quick, this page is loading right now. And then go through here and load different things. But the amount of data being transferred to my machine right now and the amount of requests that block further requests, these things are all incredibly low. So if I clear this and I refresh, that's pending. And if we look at the waterfall chart here, you'll see there isn't much that blocked additional things. Almost all of these lines are grouped and happening 
together. Versus if I go to ping, see all of these requests that block all of these requests, there's going to be a whole third layer where it does an additional set of data fetches. And this is with TRPC and with a bunch of batching. It just takes significantly longer. Oh, hi, you. It takes significantly longer because each of these JS chunks blocks until the next one, until the next one in order to get all the things that are needed to actually render the page. And then they have to also download a bunch of stuff from servers in order to get the data it needs to render. So like this is, it loops. There, there's a lot of places and points of failure that the new next model reduces to almost nothing. This is why I'm so impressed. The number of round trips, the speed at which you start getting responses, it's just, it's exponentially better. And all of this is just our like logging and event systems. You can ignore most of it. Everything else is instant. And that's what's so cool. Because waterfalls are no longer the default when working with this new model, the websites that we're building end up being significantly faster and better experiences for our users. I had no idea how this is going to perform when I opened it on the airplane. I had heard specifically, funny enough, that the Vercel dashboard sucked on an airplane. Actually, I heard somebody was using that as a reason to not use App Router. So having put no effort into our performance and our waterfalls or any of this on upload thing, I decided to check it because I know it's an example of a pretty bog standard App Router app. And this is what I saw. Insane performance like I hadn't ever seen before. This is better than what you can even do with something like PHP because you don't have the dynamic loading behaviors and the cache patterns and all these other massive wins. Even just streaming alone is such a massive win because you no longer have to make multiple waterfalling requests to get the rest of your data. Yeah, I, I am hyped on this. I've had an incredible experience working with all of these new patterns and I can confidently say my website is airplane proof. Yes, you still have to load JavaScript. Yes, a lot of functionality is missing if you don't have the JS files. And sure, there's possibly more bytes down the wire than if it was standard HTML. But when you account for all of these other things and you've reduced the waterfalls meaningfully, the experience, even on an airplane with terrible internet, is significantly better than anything I had experienced before. So yeah, what about your website? Is it airplane proof? Oh my God. Is it airplane proof? Do you want to learn more about how SSR and all of these things work in ways that it might help you there? I'll pin a video in the corner here all about how SPAs, SSR, and all these things work in interop, comparing Remix and Next and the new RSC patterns. I think it's a great video. I put a lot of effort into it. So check it out if you haven't. Appreciate y'all a ton as always. Talk to you soon. Peace, nerds.